Hello ladies and gents, I am Nadiffin, and welcome back to Ashes of the Empire Community Edition. First of all, look at some of the designs we're going to be utilising in the campaign. So, I have four going to have a look at today. We have the Acusaurus Mark III by Taurus. Taurus. Not Taurus. <laughs> so, that was quite cool. Rambo actually sits in the... In the component there, looking out, that's really quite neat. So from the first person, oh, that is, that is really cool. They approve a lot. Some very nice tank aesthetics as normal. Um, yeah, very reminiscent of some of World War II tanks. So let's see how it performs. Up there. Quite a nice little cannon, it seems. Not particularly fast round. But a very good looking tank. I do like this uh, realistic styling of tanks. That design does seem to be quite a way off, though. Let's have a look at the shell. So we have, ah, it's a shape charge. Presumably it's going to be around about this size. Hmm. Interesting around. It's quite a slow shell, so going against the Sand Raider is going to be a bit of a problem. Should be good against the larger targets, though. So, next up we have the MRA-1 Artificio by Anacreus. It's quite a cheap design, so unfortunately I'm still using some of these cheap designs. But, this is a cheap design with quite a powerful array of weapons. Also being this dirt cheap wood should make it so that it doesn't matter if it gets completely annihilated readily. Send it against a Sand Viper. So it's got a beam rider detection there. Are they beam riders? Yeah, it looks like there might be beam rider rather than actual targeting there. Hmm. Missiles there. Be nice if one actually hit so I could see how powerful they were. Oh, it's got disabled. Hmm. I'm going to get something larger, it should be good, but it is extremely cheap, so... Don't mind too much if it is a little bit... Let's try to get some medium house. That at least is not going to be moving anywhere. So they ride in. Oh yeah, they're very po nice powerful warheads. But the design is a very cheap one, so I shouldn't really expect too much from it. At the very least, it will be good cannon fodder. Next up, we have a Packing Heat by Char Charadon. One of several designs I have received by Char Charadon. And this one is no exception, with a huge array of cannons at the top there. It's going to be quite an expensive design, so maybe a little while before I can actually afford it in the campaign. But I'm looking forward to utilising these sorts of designs, because they are going to be incredibly potent. That massive array of shots all falls short because it's spawning in. There are several big hits, the heat shells, though it has been knocked over by its recoil and the cram shells, but it is still firing shots and the recoil is flinging it wildly, which is amazing. Still sitting there on its underbelly. Still actually able to do a significant amount of damage. Though, probably gets destroyed now. <laughs> ah, the APS weapon there is lining up. Yes, yeah, it's going to completely annihilate it now. Let's just retry that because I do want to see this in action again. Let's scrap works instead. Yeah, a big array of shots, but the first one does fall a little bit short, unfortunately. 
the next array. Yep, coming through, and those are some big shells. Protection seems to be a little bit off. Let's just check I have actually got override. Yeah, it is on override 0.99. I find that this works out slightly better than one, just just in, in practice. Always have a little bit of difficulty if I have it full 1.00. 0.99 seems to just be a little bit better. A very, very resilient design. Though, just look like it might be... It's in combat mode. That's just quite slow, it's fine. I may have lost the AI at the other side there. Also, it does have repair tentacles, which would be nice for combat operations. It does take a while to reload, but should it actually reload? It's 96%, you see. Let's see if we can actually fire. No. Yeah, it does take a long time to reload, but those few shots, it does fire, will do an incredible amount of damage, particularly other targets are taking and damage for it. Next up we have the Victorious Missile Tank by Red the Rage. So medium cost design, very close to tourists design there in terms of cost. How many wheels that? Looks like it should be okay. It was very low to the ground. Could have a bit of difficulty going over rough terrain, but we will we'll see. It's got a nice load of missiles. They look like they're very, yeah, they're very long, long missiles. Should I should spawn this right at the back and allow those long range missiles to do damage at range. Yeah, they're very long missiles. Probably go for a long time. It's quite, quite slow compared to the other designs from Red the Rage. Yeah, those missiles, a little bit, a bit shorter range than I thought. I thought they might have gone a little bit touch further. Still, they're very, very powerful. What are the missiles? So we have here, uh, ah, TPG. I, would, I personally would have used APN, but TPG is good. Is still good, and I just got killed. Thanks. Saying that though, the missiles have been able to take out a load of scrap works here. So despite the missiles not having too long range, they're incredibly potent. Look at those when they do hit; they make a real mess of. The Dustwind Gypsies designs with their high amounts of wood. And they do significant damage to the metal as well. So really looking forward to utilizing this as it should be able to do significant damage to those more nimble designs the cannon tanks have difficulty destroying. So do you need to get into the campaign? So here we are. Looks like the Benny Blade has actually been completed. So that is good. Just waiting for this thing to repair. But while we're here, let us spawn in our new designs. Microsaurus Mark III. The MRA1. Packing Heat. Can no, nowhere near afford and Victus missile tank. So those three all together, and I will link them together. So all of these are. I just need to repair this one. Let's pull all. There's a guardian bomber somewhere, which is taking a while to repair. Um, you're not meant to be there. Okay, let's get this lot repaired up. And I'll send over Benny Blade to deal with this massive array of sand vipers. So I have the two demolition gears. They're going to do quite well in this scenario. 
have the Benny Blade, which I would quite like to spawn in. Right, so we have the Benny Blade to the side here. Demolition gear is right at the front, so hopefully it can take out a few Sand Vipers. Then Tunguska, the Reavers on the wing there, and then planes just roughly in the middle. So let's just jump on you. Spawn in the land. And then begin the battle. Wait for the thing to spawn in, and then let's head over and see how it all goes. So they all fire straight away at the Benny Blade. Ooh, load my vehicles just blew themselves up, it seems. Big array of shots there. So missiles take out one Sand Vipers, it seems. Demolition gear is going in, murdering things. The Benny Blade is just getting absolutely swamped. Which is unfortunate, because it is a very strong design. Demolition cannon there. Taking on whatever it can. Planes flying above, trying to do as much as they can. Demogears getting into the mess of it all. A little Tunguska there, firing at the side. The most damage seems to be coming from the planes once more, with their bombardments coming from the sky. There you go, another two damage there. Another little shot there. How's little Benny doing? She's lost a fair few of its components, but it is still going strong. That front armour is just incredibly resilient. It's taking a little bit of damage at the base there, and it just did most of its damage to itself with that shot there, blowing its own front off. Let's just jump on it see if I can't repair it at all. Jump over here. Hmm. You are not doing very well. I think I might just get rid of the Guardian. Uh, same with you, actually. I might just get rid of these two by, gu by Guardian 23. Um, just because the patch fatigue seems to have really made them suffer. Some Guskus going. And... Is there any way I can get close to try and capture some of this stuff? Uh, maybe? Let's just jump down from orbit. That doesn't seem to be working. Well, the Demogear is doing well. Let's see if we can't capture this little guy. Oh no, that is my, that is my tank. <laughs> oh! Ow! Ouch, that was painful. I hit my own demolition gear. Like the enemy is taking a severe beating. Is that the last of them? It looks like that Sand Viper is going to take a couple of big hits there. Oh. So I'll not cut damaging components. You know, trying to capture things in this large battle is getting decidedly more difficult. So just probably have to just hope the AI can deal with them. And they do seem to be quite doing quite a good job of it. So I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Benny Blade there, doing really good work. You know, just having a couple, just the difference shown by having a solid tank really shows, rather than all the, well, more affordable designs I had previously. The Guardian 23 designs, patch fatigue has just hit them a little bit too hard, so I'm just gonna have to scrap you, unfortunately. I did enjoy you, and you did definitely keep me alive in a couple of fights. Okay, now move over to grab the, sal the friendly salvage there. I should just send the hauler over. The hauler will get there a lot faster than the very slow tanks. Let's see if I can't get this next tile. 
go into battle. Yeah. I'd like to quite use the new designs, but there we go. Well, the Tungusk, one Tunguskas is fortunately not available. It still looks like I overwhelm them so heavily. Going to be able to just completely surround them. So, so here we go. We have the Demolition Gears and Tungusk real close. So that's going to split the Sand Raiders focus up, allowing the Benny Blade, which I just need to move a little bit closer, to have a good firing line and allow the flanking and the planes just to do their own thing. Okay, so all three Sun Raiders have spawned in, but all my vehicles have surrounded them. So let's just begin the battle. So they all fire towards various different targets. Their damage has been split up, causing them to crash into each other, which is a really good. Straight away, the first barrage hits them and destroys one there. Making a beeline straight for the Benny Blade, which is good because that gives it a lot better targeting and not having to lead its targets as much. This cram cannon should be able to get quite close. Not quite hit, unfortunately. So one is already AI dead. And one of my designs got two damage. It's a real shame. Uh, ignore salvage. Got to check that. So it was destroying things which have already been destroyed. You don't need to kill it. It's dead. I'd rather you target the other design which is still combat operational. Like those two planes. They're doing very nicely. Minon doesn't seem to be doing too much in the... In the offensive capabilities, but it's incredibly dive bombing movement. I say, is it completely annihilate something? Or was that the hard to tell which missiles those came from? Well, here come these shots there from the Reaver buggy. Let's see the little frag shots. A little bit of damage there, but it's longer distances. Proving awkward. The AI are though being taken out by the EMP missiles of tourists' plane. Solid hit to the side there, breaking off a load of components and one of the guns. The belly blade there, firing a little bit short of its target because it spins in a death spiral make it quite difficult for all the targets to be shot at though. Just jump down see if I can't capture it. Probably not. That's too damaged. Oh no, did catch it. Fantastic. That means I can then scrap it. For points. Excellent. And one of those reef buggies fortunately didn't make it, so I am going to scrap you. But that's partly because I am going to be now adding in these next few vehicles. Well, when I can. Just trying to go around here to make sure this is actually mine. Looks like the defense forces have arrived. I didn't actually fully repair them, which is unfortunate. Let's go into the battle and set everything up. So, ah, this is the damaged tremor group. The reason I want to spawn on top of this plane is so I can dive quickly down onto the tremor and try and capture it for the huge amount of resources it can provide. Okay, everything's spawned in. Let's begin the battle. So it's only got Trem's only got a couple of copperheads. And seems pretty disabled in its own right. That's quite cool. And the APS weapon just got detonated at the fore. So I do want to see how those 
Demolition Kid just ran straight in. Oh yeah, that was an impressive strike. Wow. Let's jump. Let's try and jump into this thing and not get shot, which I just did. Okay. It's quite difficult to break into this thing when it's being bombarded, I guess. Trying to break straight through to the AI though, while under attack. It's more sporting this way, I guess. Is it mine? Yes, it is now mine. Excellent. Something else is, spawn is about to spawn in though. I'm spawning in. Ah, the Wanda. What appears to be. Is that scrap works? In down I go. Run straight on this and start capturing it immediately. You might wonder? Yes, it is. Excellent. So it's my wonder now. Dive down in onto the scrap works. Come on, where is the AI? Churn my way through this thing. Is that mine? Yep, part, at least part of the scrap works is mine now. I think it is multiple sub objects, so not all of it will be able to get through to it. Ah. Probably trying to shoot at the rear end of it. Yes, the battle finished. And that was very profitable with all the stuff I just captured. Because yeah. you... So there's the Wanda, which I'd like to scrap. And that one I'd like to scrap. Both of which were worth yeah. an absolute fortune. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to build a balloon. That. This group though does seem to be moving fairly slow. Spawn them in. Yeah. Okay, order them all to go at decent speed. So pull all, that should mean. Yeah. Uh, let's go 18 meters per second. That's considerably faster than it was, yeah. so. Give it that much. I'd like to utilize the new vehicles in combat. Moving out. Looks like I'm going to have a chance yeah. to do that. Come on, and merge. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Merge with new vehicles, all fighting against a single scrap works. Okay, so all the new vehicles are going to be spawning to start with, along with the demolition gears and tungusters. So, pretty much this line here. The plane's going to be a little bit afterwards, and the Benny Blade there. So, it's just spawn in. In the area. Um, might wait for sunrise. So it looks like we significantly outnumber them, so they only get a single scrap works compared to the large portion of my forces. Uh, the packing heat looks like it just killed one of my own vehicles. Yes, it did. Though the next shot landed squarely inside and looks like it took out almost the entirety of the scrap works in a single go. Yeah. So those yeah, those shells are coming from packing heat there. Yeah, good solid hits from packing heat. Bombardment there. 
what's that one? Ah, yes, that's the little, little missile design. Red Rangers one. It doesn't seem to be moving. Uh, maybe it's because it's got a good bead on its targets. It doesn't need to. All Scott works are firing towards packing heat, which is considerably out of its range. Probably because it's been blowing itself backwards with recoil. Yeah, it's reloading at the moment. Just get a few shots off and then it has to wait quite a while for those shells to reload. This guy's doing quite well. Waiting for the new missiles there to load. And there you go, new barrage from packing heat completely smashes through the front of the craft and annihilating it entirely. Uh, packing heat itself just took a barrage. But it's very heavy armour. It's able to completely nullify that almost entirely. In fact, I think it did nullify it. It didn't take any damage whatsoever. Just got to try and get back to the combat and see what's going on. Other than lots of missiles fling around in the sky and a few heat shells. Ah, the Benny Blade has spawned in. It was making a quick backtrack. Slays are taking out some cannons. And missiles from one of the other designs skimming across the ground. Couldn't tell which craft they were from. Aircraft ones there, especially from the top, making sure there's nothing left to be surviving. Good solid hits there. Okay, let's pull all. I think I will dispose of one of these demolition gears. They're nice and all, but it's getting to the point where they are being a bit more of a liability than a bonus, particularly with the number of land vehicles I have. I don't want them crashing into my own vehicles and destroying them. And one of the reasons you may be wondering why I have these small radar balloons, that's because I just I don't want them to be seeing too much. I like to be able to see what's in the next area, but not like all the way the entirety of the map I like to have the tiles act as actual bonuses and expanding my local vision and not being able to see what's going on over in this side of the corner or everywhere around Gothers and Sand Vipers okay let's take these on let's put Packing Heat really close to the front lines. So if you can then, this barrage can take out a load of the sand vipers in one go. So quite a few of their designs have spawned in. They are a little bit junk mo movement. It's going to be the planes which I'm more worried about. The Gothers. Really got a dedicated anti-tank there. Oops! Well, that's a bit annoying there. With packing heat is just flipped itself. Oh, missiles though from the Vectress do hit the Gotha and that's going to hopefully make it a little bit more difficult, but easier to deal with. And demolition gear flying straight past its target. Yeah, packing heat has gone and made itself upside down, but it has a go at the plane regardless does miss, which is unfortunate, but it does have a good go at it. Everything seems to be going after the Gotha, which is not what I want. Um, I hadn't got them in combat mode. So I was moving them around. That's a bit unfortunate. No wonder they were stationary in the last battle. I like the fact that packing heat is trying to take out the plane. 
Right, I think I need to jump in this and get my own guns in on this. Gotha has been taken down, that is good. Over the top of right there. Just trying to deal with them since my vehicles don't seem to be having a very good job of it. Because the packing heat is upside down. Well, looks like two of the targets have gone right next to each other. Hopefully, I can try and take out the AI of these and capture them. Both mine. Excellent. That's more resources for next episode. Getting close again. Demolition gear doing an admirable job. It's too damaged. Yep, and I grab what little resources there. Still more than I'd have got pre otherwise. And didn't get anywhere near that one, which is AI dead, so it would have been a nice load of resources. And last we have the Gotha, which seems to have been taken out by the missiles from the Vectris, so I'm very glad got the Vectris spawned in, since it's been able to take out the Gothas really effectively. Oh, we just, just had another Sand Viper spawn in. Poor little guy, he ain't got a stand a chance, has he? Got everyone firing at him, including the... <laughs> Skipping through the air. Let's join in. Complete melee, and I got shots, which is not really surprising. So this is going to say, yep, you're annihilated. And you look pretty dead as well. A battle finished. You, and I bet I'm just, yeah, I'm actually over that line. Some more scrap works to take on now. So I'm very impressed with the Vectris. Uh, not, doesn't seem to be as useful against the ground vehicles, but against the planes and that, its high power powered weapons have been proving invaluable. The MRA-1 doesn't seem to have been, again, doesn't seem to have done too much, but to be honest with the cost of it, I'm not expecting great things. I think it has been doing steady amount of damage against a lot of the vehicles. The one I haven't really noticed is um, Tourist's design. This guy. The Echosaurus, uh, or Saurus, or whatever it is. Packing it has definitely been doing work. I want to see what this tank does, and basically how well it does it. Now let's begin and see how well this tank performs. It really doesn't seem to be, have any ammo. So it is loaded. just doesn't seem to want to fire. Hmm. Maybe it's just not loaded properly. I haven't had it in play long enough for it. Parts of it got severely damaged. I'll keep it around for a while. It's, I do like the design. It doesn't seem to have been done particularly much. But then again, I have got things like Charadon's insane heat cannon thing and the Benny Blade, which have really been stars of the, the show of this episode. The damage the taking heat is just absorbing. There we go. So, demolition gear is heading towards packing heat. Come on, they're AI dead. I want to try and get hold of them. To get them? Maybe? Possibly? Doesn't look like it did. Let's hope you've claim those scrap works for the resources. Lovely load of missiles flying there. I'm just smashing the last scrap works to pieces. I 
Yeah, the Benny Blade. It's lasers firing as well. And the target is too damaged. Only a few parts de destroyed. The Tunguska Panzers now, I think I am moving beyond them as well. So they're one of my favoured little designs. I think they are show it is showing its age now. 70,000 resources now though. Yeah. Alright, so claim this next tile as well. I have plenty of resources for the next episode. So I think I will leave it there. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Ashes of the Empire Community Edition. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below, as it is always great to hear from you lot. Otherwise, that's it for me for now, and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye!